How's it going everyone? Tommy here and in today's lecture we're going to cover the topic of why throws are important for developing power. Today's topics, what do throws look like, why we use them, when would they best be used and how to implement them and we're hopefully looking to develop some learning outcomes into the what and why behind throws for power and the when and how to actually implement them within training. Now, from the outset, medicine balls are loaded spherical shapes that are used for versatility and development power. Something that I recently came across is that they can be categorized. And as you mentioned here, they can be categorized into throws, which is basically determining anything overhead, tosses or rotational uh, exercises, which can be obviously determined by the rotational as set an example, a picture against the wall. Passes, which you could imagine someone standing against something solid like a wall and performing a chest throw or pass. Uh, and then a shot put sort of variation, which normally requires a single arm uh, effort. So this could be a single arm medicine ball, a shot put against the wall, adding a rotation in there, etc. The biggest takeaway here is the beauty lies in the trajectory. Now, when looking at the different categories of medicine ball work, they, they all might look different, but the underlying principles remain the same. We're looking to move the ball as fast as possible to create global power, um, basically to develop a, a motor pattern or skill development, um, which is definitely a key factor in medicine ball training. Now we move on to why we use them. And although there's not a great amount of research behind medicine ball training, this doesn't stop us as practice, uh, practice, practitioners um, to come up with sort of innovation within new methods and experimentation. Carl Val is someone who has used medicine balls for a number of years, and he comes up with a phrase here, whereas medicine balls are complementary and serve as bridging tools between sports skill and gross strength training. Now, what we can make of this statement if we look on a timeline of maybe sports practice at one end or sports in general, and the other end we have training within an environment of S and C, then medicine ball sort of does well to bridge the gap between performing these sporting movements um, in relation, we could call them sports specific movements without getting into the nuances of sports specific where it becomes detrimental. This is down to, as we mentioned previously, the versatility of these implements and the movements we can actually practice and overload. Growth strength training is really good at developing maximal force production, but then how we actually implement it to develop force really quickly, this is where methods come in, such as medicine ball training. Now, if we think of typical ways to develop power, such as Olympic lifts, loaded and unloaded jumps, from a primary movement pattern standpoint or a multi-plane multi movement standpoint, they're very up and down, forwards and backwards. Now with medicine balls, this allows us to get into space that we might not necessarily access with the typical ways to develop, such as Olympic lifts, loaded and unloaded jumps. So in return, medicine balls, as you mentioned, broadens our horizon of movements that we can access and also develops power uh, through the by doing so. Um, in essence, this gives us a way wider base of power to work from. If you look for it, look at it from a coaching perspective, uh, maybe an athlete perspective, then they are way easier to teach compared to the previously mentioned and also allows someone who may not be representative of developing out outputs as high forces, then this may be an easy teaching method to basically show them how to move something with intent. Now, when we look at when I, they best used, there's a lot of commonalities to the previously spoken um, plyometric videos and power lectures uh, that we touched on. So earlier on in the training sessions, unless using a trainer method such as contrast or complex trainer, where this uses basically the phenomenon of a heavy lift followed by an explosive lift to touch into more recruitment of the higher fibers, which allows us to produce greater force, uh, explained simply. Can be used as primers due to their high neurological tendencies and coordination patterns. So medicine balls are a great tool for this in warm-ups, 
um, developing the skills to produce power in the future have also been used as conditioning elements for a more rhythmic uh, pattern. High rates of fatigue and tiredness may actually affect the outcome if performed later in the session. So we know that to get the most out of these velocity adaptations or speed adaptations, we want to try and produce maximal intent for the highest effort possible. Fatigue may hinder this. And they are an actual skill also alongside plyometrics. So do take the time to practice. And this is where a more extensive, low impact, low cyclical practice helps develop the tendencies and skill to then put it into further practice when producing greater intensities. Some questions to consider based on Carl Val's experience when working with medicine ball and choosing the right movement. Does the exercise actually include a throwing or ballistic components, basically a concentric action with no eccentric, as these are pri uh, primarily concentric, uh, concentric movement patterns? Could the exercise be done with another tool or piece of equipment more effectively or safely? Is the overload uh, unique to the inclusion of the medicine ball? So other options would not be appropriate and kind of pan enhance or create value in the movement pattern or exercise option. And in the final slide, we touch upon implementation. So again, we use Carvel as an example, um, and he gave us a phrase with weight selection. So casual weight selection or being a little bit lackadaisy reinforces lower technical proficiency and defeats the ball's neurological benefits. This can play a huge factor in determining the negative or positive effect that the medicine ball training has on the change we are intending to make. Some recommendations to follow. Overhead work between one to three kilos based on some of the limitations in overhead mobility. Rotational or twisting can be categorized into lighter loads to help with relaxation or the disassociation between upper and lower as we want the legs to be the dominant force, but we want to disassociate the upper during twisting exercises. And heavier for more concentric recruitment basically means when we go heavier, it requires us to, to produce a lot greater concentric force to overcome the heavier implement. Vertical and horizontal can be are possible between three to eight kilos, although we must keep in mind that speed must never be sluggish. And as repeated, intent and effort is key um, to get the most out of this type of training. Mostly when fatigue is not present at the best performed, as also mentioned, although they can be used again as conditioning tools, but a more rhythmic motion to develop the tendencies for future ballistic powerful exercises. We touched on some of the small aspects around medicine ball training. I would definitely recommend further reading as it can be a dig deep into a rabbit hole, but hopefully you took something away from this and we will see you in the next lecture.